Hello, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Today's video is my sewing vlog for the first three months of 2021. Last year I started doing vlogs and I was doing them every month and I kind of felt like that was a little too often and I've been trying to get a better balance of doing videos and blog posts along with like all my pattern design and other work. So I've kind of cut down a bit on the videos um, to try to like get some of the other stuff done and refocus myself. So I am planning to do a vlog once every three months. So in this video, I'm gonna share all the things that I've been making, the things I finished, the things that are still in progress, um, some sewing books that I've been reading and things I've been buying and playing around with, um, crafts that I'm planning to do, um, just lots of fun crafty sewing stuff. Let's dive in. Let's start with some things that I finished in the first three months of 2021. So one thing is this quilt and I pieced this in 2020, like right about a year ago now at the beginning of quarantine, I found all of these old quilt blocks um, and I made these in the early 2000s. And they were just kind of leftover things from a quilting class that I did. And I made another quilt using the majority of the blocks, but I just had a bunch of leftover, a bunch of scraps that matched. And I pieced them all together last year. And then in January, I decided I need to get this quilt done. So I just quilted it up. It's a, like a lap quilt size. Um, yeah, I call it my rejects and leftovers because it's literally all the blocks that were rejected for that other quilt and then the leftover fabric. So just kind of improvisational um, with a little bit of piecing in there. Nothing too extraordinary. Lots of old um, quilting cottons. I used to like really love the quilting cotton section. I loved all the patterns and all the prints in that section. So I used to buy a lot of them and I don't really do that anymore. I'm, Kind of gotten over that phase but um i do really love some of these prints like there's this really pretty yellow and pink floral and this brown with little dots um so yeah just another cozy quilt to go in my collection and then i also finished this knitted tank top and i started this back in i think october 2020 and this is the emma tank by paula strict and i'll put links to everything down in the show notes um, I had some black, black yarn and brown yarn just sitting in my stash for years, and I thought this would be a really great way to use it. Um, it was kind of intermediate level. I struggled a little bit with some parts of the instructions, um, but I really like the stitch. I've never done this half brioche stitch before, so it was fun to learn that stitch. Great to use some stash yarn. Um, I haven't worn it yet. I'm not totally sure if I like how it looks on me because it feels a little bit thick and I'm kind of busty. So I don't know. It was fun to do. That's part of the thing is like sometimes you just have to appreciate that you enjoy the process of making it more than the actual object. The only other thing I made during the last three months that I finished was um, a pair of Hudson pants for my dad for his birthday. Um, it's the Hudson men's version. It's a pattern by True Bias. I've made them for myself a few times and I was gonna make these for him for Christmas, but ended up making him quilted slippers and I didn't get around to the pants. So they're in kind of a sage green. I still need to um, get the right elastic for it. So I guess they're not totally finished, but they're pretty much finished. So that's really it for finished projects. I have a number of things in progress. And one of them is the Rosa shirt by Tilly and the Buttons. This is a pattern that I bought probably like four or five years ago and I've had the fabric for a really long time. You can kind of see it. I'm like totally in progress. I haven't worked on it for a few weeks, but um, it's a princess seamed shirt, kind of a Western style. The back has this really cool V-shaped yoke. Um, so I've had this pattern for a long time. It's a very like kind of fit and flare design with the princess seams. And this is a chambray fabric and I'm using this like golden yellow top stitching, which I love for that classic look. Um, and I just need to continue on. I've sewn the button bands. I need to do the sleeves. 
I'm doing the long sleeves for this shirt, which is, I think, an extended part of the pattern. And then I'm going to do a traditional sleeve packet placket using the pattern from the Cheyenne tunic and shirt by Hey June Handmade. So I'm doing a little bit of um, hybridization between a couple patterns to kind of get all the features that I like. Um, the Tilly pattern is a little bit more simplified than some other shirt patterns. So I really wanted that traditional sleeve placket. I also lined the yoke in on the back, um, which is a more traditional way to do a shirt. So this is in progress. I need to do the sleeves and the collar, um, but I just need to make time for it. The cat's crawling all over everything in the studio right now. Um, another thing, another project I'm continuing on from last year is my single girl, freewheeling single girl quilt by Denise Schmidt. This is inspired by the double wedding ring design quilt, but it's a more modern take on it and it's all these circles. Um, so the last three months I finished up the green column of circles that I'm doing. I also have a column of yellow circles and red circles. Um, so I just have four more blocks to do, or it's really 16 because four, um, four blocks makes one big block. So I'm going to do like blues and purples for another one. It's kind of a little rainbow, a uh, rainbow quilt of these um, colorful rings. Um, so another slow project that I'm working on, it's a queen size quilt, which is the biggest I will have ever made. Um, so that's why it's taking time. <laughs> so another project I've been working on is a quilted jacket. And I'm using the Aurora jacket pattern from Pauline Alice. I don't remember what size I'm using exactly, but I did read that um, some people thought that the armhole was too short. So I compared it to a jacket that I like and I lengthened the depth in the armhole a little bit, adjusted the sleeve to match. And I've also added about two inches in length to the body because um, I'm 5'11". So I always need a little bit more length. And I'm using scraps of light blue and beige fabric. Um, the outside is very pieced. Um, and then the inside is just bigger scraps. Um, I'm using my improvisational style of piecing to piece my scraps. And I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Hopefully I'll get to wear it before it gets too hot and summery here. So I'm really focusing on this project this week. If you're interested in learning how to piece your fabric scraps together in this improvisational style, I have a whole class about it. It's designed for garment sewists who want to use up their scraps and learn about quilting. Um, it's really comprehensive. You'll learn all the steps of making a quilt as well as my unique method for improvisational piecing. I'll put a link to that down in the show notes. And I have a few more yarn projects that are in progress. It's kind of nice to have a like knitting or crochet project to do while just sitting on the couch and watching TV. So I started using some of my scrap yarn. I have a lot of this worsted weight to make a granny square quilt. Yeah, this is just a really basic granny square and I'm kind of following this pattern called the Easy Peasy by Meet Me at Mike's. Um, again, I'll put a link down in the show notes. Um, this one is like a, looking a little bit wobbly, I think because of this brown yarn is a little bit weird. And it's the same brown yarn I used in my tank top. So that's another ongoing project. And then I'm making a sweater. This is the Nanaimo cardigan. Um, and I think the designer is Good Night Day. And this is a raglan style top down. It has this big collar. I'm using Lion Brand Thick and Quick in Lagoon. And I'm already getting close to making the ribbing on the hem. And then I will need to make the sleeve. So it's really fast in this thick and quick. And I'm using 17 size needles. So. This is a fun one. I've only been working on it for a couple weeks probably, and I've almost got off the sweater. Another fun project that I'm working on is a paper plant. I have some areas in my house that um, just don't have good enough lighting to keep a plant alive, and every plant I've tried just dies and well, so I thought I could make a paper plant, and I found a book all about making paper plants called, I think, Handmade Paper Plants. 
Um, and I got it from the library. I'm going to end up buying it because I really like it. I want to use it. So I started making this heart leaf philodendron and these leaves are made with brown paper packing tape on one side and then this chartreuse green paper on the other. And then this is like a wired um, paper covered wire for the stem. So I need to take all the leaves and make them into like longer stems. And then <laughs> kitty's meowing. So um, I have all my leaves made and I just need to make them into the branches to make my plant. So that's another fun project I'm working on. So another project I tried out was making this vintage kind of fanny pack pocket. Um, this is a pattern I think from 1940, belonged to my grandma. And I've always been really fascinated by this pocket that hangs off a belt. So I traced out the pattern and I sewed it up gave it a try. I shared about this a little bit on Instagram and this is just a purchase belt and here's the little pocket. Um, it has kind of a simple um, faced opening for the inside of the pocket and there are these little loops that um, that you create with the fabric. It's a little pocket flap that's built in. Um, pretty cute. I didn't really find it as useful as I was hoping. Um, I think I was, yeah, with this belt, I was wearing it kind of low and it would hit against my leg. I didn't really like it. So, um, so I was kind of just threw it in a bin because I wasn't too excited about it. Um, I still kind of, I really like wearing fanny packs. And so one of my future patterns maybe will be a fanny pack. We'll see. <laughs> I have a lot of future patterns that I've been working on and thinking about. Um, so there's a lot to do. <laughs> Another thing I'm going to work on is making some backpacks out of this canvas. This is just um, an unbleached canvas I got from Joann's. Um, I still need to wash it up. And I want to make some backpacks that are going to look really good sitting in my living room. I have two bags right now for my emergency earthquake kit. One for myself and one for the cat. And they're just not very attractive. So I want to make a backpack that will be more attractive, that can sit out and be accessible in case of emergency. So I think I might use the Cooper pattern. It's a Cooper bag by Colette and Seamwork. Um, it's a really cute bag and has a lot of details. And because I have a Seamwork membership, I had enough credits to download it. I also got this otter wax so I can wax the canvas. Um, I looked at buying waxed canvas and it's pretty expensive, but the otter wax block is about like $12. So uh, I'm gonna give that a try, making a waxed canvas myself and then making backpacks. Um, it's kind of a lot of effort for an earthquake kit, but it should be a fun experience. <laughs> And I also bought a couple of other patterns this quarter. I got um, the Zero Waste Backpack by The Craft of Cloths. It's an Australian-based um, pattern company. The designer is named Liz Haywood. Um, and I'm really intrigued by the Zero Waste pattern. So that's something I want to try out. And the backpack, if you make it in a really lightweight, like nylon fabric, it'll roll up really tiny, which would be great for travel. Um, so not something I necessarily need, but something that I'd really like to try. And then the other pattern I got is the Mahogany Turban by Fiber and Cloth. The designer Alexis has tested patterns for me years ago. Um, and I've always wanted to have some sort of head wrap or bonnet that I could wear at night if I'm doing like a treatment on my hair. Um, it's, it can be really good for curly hair, which I don't really have enough right now to um, be very curly, but, but especially when my hair is a little bit longer, I think it'd be really nice to have a silk turban that I could sleep in and that would like really cushion the curls. So I recently got a couple of fitting books because I plan on doing some more fitting tutorials this year. And so I thought that I should do some more research, get more um, advice on it. The first one is the Palmer Pledge Complete Guide to Fitting. Um, I have not broken into this one yet, but I'm pretty excited about it. This one came out a couple years ago and it's an update to a really classic fitting book. And then I was Googling something and I found a number of recommendations for fast fit. So this is a used book 
Um, and I already browsed all the way through it and learned a lot. I thought it was really great. So I think if you are looking for a fitting book, this one could be really good. So I had a few videos on the YouTube and blog this quarter, um, and they were really focused around my Nita wrap skirt. Um, I wanted to do a full like blog tour and everything, but just wasn't really feeling up to it. Um, things have been going a little bit slowly. I've had a lot of freelance work to do, so I haven't had as much time for so DIY and wasn't up for organizing something. So I did do some videos that would help you sew that pattern. And the first one was how to use interfacing. So tips for fusing interfacing. And then there's one for how to sew a dart um, and then how to move a dart. So like if the dart is not in the right position in a side seam or in a waist seam, I show you how to move that in the pattern. And then finally, I did a tutorial for how to finish a waistband with bias tape. So this is really helpful if you're using a bulky fabric and you don't wanna turn in the um, raw edge of your waistband, you can just leave it hanging down and finish it with bias tape. It's a really beautiful finish. I've also been moving some stuff around here in my sewing room. You might notice if you've seen my blog before that um, my desk is in a new place. I put some more stuff up on the walls and I'm doing a little bit of de-stashing. I put a whole bunch of printed vintage sewing patterns up in my Etsy shop. Um, they range from like 70s to the early 2000s, and I still have a few left, mostly from the 70s. So if you're interested, I will put a link to that down in the show notes. I've also been working on some patterns. I have three patterns that I have started working on in the last three months. Um, the first one is for a pair of elastic waist pants and shorts. Um, and I kind of set that aside for a minute because I got distracted by a pattern for a simple shell tank top. And that pattern would go along with an e-course I'm also trying to develop about learning how to sew. So really a beginning garment sewing class. And so it's a really basic tank top that teaches a lot of um, skills that you would need for a number of garments. So I'm excited about that one. I think it'll be a really cool top. But then I realized that we're getting into spring and summer and I have this dress pattern that I have been wanting to make for a few years. And I would really like to release it in the spring or summer, um, you know, so that it's seasonally appropriate. So I switched my focus back to that one. And I think I'm getting close. The problem or the hard thing with um, pattern making is that at least for me, there's a lot of like testing out and, you know, you draft it and then you sew it up and you try it on and then you redo that and you can just keep going in that cycle for a really long time. So that's where I am. That's kind of what I've been doing the last three months. It's just this cycle of drafting and testing and drafting and testing. So I think I'm getting closer. I really like all of these designs and I'd love to see them actually become patterns one day. I've also been doing a lot of other freelance work these last three months, so I haven't been, had as much time to focus on the pattern making, um, but that other work makes me a lot more money, so that's where I really need to um, put my focus and spend my time. But I'm still here, still thinking about videos to make, I'm still working on patterns, just going a little bit more slowly than I might have the past couple years. Make sure to check out the show notes for details on everything I talked about. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the little subscribe button down below. Happy sewing.